kind of ironic because our deepest belief is the freedom and the right to pursue happiness. So we are pursuing happiness with a vengeance and we're not happy. You shouldn't have to pursue happiness. You increase the enthusiasm and that brings the happiness. And how do you measure happiness? How would you know you were happy if you were happy? When you're happy, the burdens of your life don't feel as heavy. You could say that the opposite of happy is not sad. The opposite of happy is heavy. When you're not happy, life feels heavy. The burdens feel unbearable. When you add happiness, you have the same burdens as before, but they're not so heavy. You're more willing to put up with the burdens. You're more accepting. And so they're not as heavy or oppressive. Joy lightens the burden. It doesn't change the burden. Same job, same responsibility, same difficulties. But it used to seem unbearable, and now it's kind of doable. You increase the joy. Now your burdens are not only doable, they're, they're quite all right. Increase your joy even more, what's going to happen? The burdens don't feel like burdens at all. Increase the joy beyond that, what's going to happen? Not only are the burdens not burdens, they feel like blessings. That is the effect of joy. So you know you're lacking in joy if your burdens are heavy. If you feel weighed down, you need more joy. Actually, love has the same effect. When you're with somebody you love, the burdens don't feel so heavy. In simple language, without joy and without love, having a burden feels wrong. I shouldn't have burdens. It's not right. Why should life be uphill? Why do I have to put up with this? In other words, I have no tolerance for it. I have no capacity for it. Life shouldn't have burdens. When you add the joy or the love, all of a sudden, it's, yeah, life includes some burdens, and that's okay. They're not as objectionable, and therefore not as burdensome. When you have no tolerance for your burdens, it's because you're running low on energy. Joy and love increase your life energy, and then having a burden in your life feels okay. Sounds just about right. Sunny days and rainy days, it's okay. So this year, boy, we have plenty of burdens. But we also have to have the joy that lightens the burden. And it lightens it to such a degree that by the end of the month, and certainly by the end of the two months, the burden should feel welcome. 
you welcome the burdens because it just adds another layer to the meaningfulness of life. Now, how do you increase your joy? Seems like the harder you try to be happy, the more miserable you become. Which might explain why we're such an unhappy nation. Kind of ironic because our deepest belief is the freedom and the right to pursue happiness. So we are pursuing happiness with a vengeance, and we're not happy. Because you can't pursue happiness If you're pursuing happiness, it means you're miserable. You shouldn't have to pursue happiness. So how do you increase the happiness? You increase the enthusiasm. And that brings the happiness. But you don't pursue happiness as a goal. It's not doable. Happiness is the result not the job. The job is to be more enthusiastic. The result will be more happiness. What does more enthusiastic mean? Whatever you're doing, do it with a whole heart. You're doing it, well, do it completely. Get into what you're doing so that you're doing it enthusiastically, not just mechanically or robotically. And that's doable. That's doable. Anyone can be more enthusiastic at any moment. Enthusiastic means more involved. So put a little more thought into what you're doing, put a little more significance, Realize how important it is and how what you have as a job, as a, as a life responsibility, is actually a blessing. And you're doing it. So why not do it with enthusiasm? That's realistic and doable. And when you add enthusiasm, the joy will follow. So, make a list of the good things you're doing and become a little more enthusiastic about it. Sometimes you see a group of people, a society, a neighborhood, a family, and they seem to be so happy. You look at them and you say, wow, what a happy bunch of people. And it's very likely that what you're actually seeing is an enthusiastic bunch of people. It's hard to distinguish an enthusiastic person from a happy person. So you might think, well, yeah, happy people are enthusiastic. That's probably true. But it's also true that enthusiastic people are happy. Just the very sense of accomplishment. Like if you're enthusiastic about what you're doing, by the end of the day, you're pretty much exhausted. Not bored, exhausted because you put in a good day's work. That itself makes you happy. You can fall asleep peacefully because you know that you made the best of the day. There's nothing better than falling asleep exhausted from good stuff. 
So when you're enthusiastic, you really use your energy constructively. When you're not enthusiastic, you get tired, you get bored, and you get bitter about life because you're not living it fully. So, if you want to be healthier, more productive, happier, be more enthusiastic. Don't live a half-life and then complain that it doesn't feel right. Of course it don't feel right. A half-life is not a life. So, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing, do it more enthusiastically. If you're a bank robber, be enthusiastic about it. Now, you think maybe you shouldn't be a bank robber? That's a whole different conversation. So, whatever it is you're doing, unless you choose to do something else, or until you find something else to do, whatever it is you are doing, do it wholeheartedly. So that when you find your better project or more enjoyable project, you're likely to be enthusiastic about that. But if you get into the habit of living a half-life, you know, uh, turning on the lights on a dimmer, you might get into the habit of living a half-life, and then even when you do the better thing, you'll only do it halfway. So we should never be halfway. Don't drag your feet. Whatever you're going to do, if you decide to do it, do it all the way. It's much healthier. And if what you're doing is wrong, well then, don't do it. Because the only way to do it is all the way. And if that's not good, then find another job. Find another hobby, find another career or something. But doing it halfway is neither here nor there. One of the famous rabbis in Europe said to the man who was known as the sinner of the community, but he was very enthusiastic, high energy, always happy. And the rabbi said to him, I envy you. Because when you finally decide to be good, you're going to be so good. Whereas people who are dragging their feet being good, nothing to get excited about. So joy is always a good thing. And even if what you're doing is wrong, do it with joy. Live. If you can come up with a better idea, great, then live that one. But it's never good to not live. So the Baal Shem Tov said, when the Torah says serve God with joy, it doesn't mean follow his commandments joyfully. It means serve God by being happy. That itself is a service. That itself makes God happy. Because if you're enthusiastic about the life he gave you, you're being a good, gracious, grateful guest in his world. So you're very welcome to stay. But if you're living in his world and complaining and miserable, you're not a, you're not a very pleasant guest. So just being happy, even if you're doing nothing else, being happy to be in God's plan, that's that's good in itself. 
So if you have nothing else to do, be happy. Be enthusiastic. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic, and you're looking for more information, or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it. These ideas, these messages, this approach to life, this approach to Torah, to meaning, and to morals is vital for the world today. And we need to get this message out to the entire world. It is universal. It's essential. It's indispensable. To support this effort, if you want to be a partner in this crime, check out the link and make a donation. It really helps a lot. And thank you in advance.